everybody. Hey. Welcome to Facebook Live. Today is, what day is today, Carol? <laughs> Today's Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. July the yeah. 1st, which is crazy, right? Yeah. 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 July already. Yeah. So we're going to be uh, talking tonight as we let some folks jump on here. We're going to be talking about um, what, how do we go from getting uh, from here to there and uh, what happens and, and what are those things that can kind of get in our way from, from getting to there, the place that we want to be, that we aspire to be as Christians, as believers. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to be talking about that as folks are jumping on here. Hey, Greg, uh, I see several folks jumping in. Timothy, uh, great to see you guys on here. Um, so I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I struggle with drugs and alcohol and food issues. And my name is Rodney. Hey, Rodney. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. And I struggle with relationship addiction, isolation, and control. My name is Carol. Hey, Carol. So while we're waiting for some folks to get, get on here, hey, Tina, Domingo in the house. Mm -hmm. um, hey, want to let you know a couple things. I know people have been asking some questions. So real quick, just want to address those. Uh, one is... Uh, if you didn't know, that a week before the summit starts, we know that it's July 30th and 31st, um, and it's going to be available for a week, to, uh, up to a week, to, to replay and go back and watch some of your favorite talks. And, and uh, But uh, a week before the summit starts on the 30th, you're going to actually get a test link, and that'll come to the email that you registered with. So make sure that you know what email you <laughs> registered uh, to. Um, so if that's an email that you are on, you want to be on that email and you'll get that link and you'll be able to test it and make sure everything works and the sound and the, all that stuff. So uh, be watching for that. I want to let you know we've got uh, Spanish subtitles available. You need to register on the website on the Spanish uh, portion of the page so that we know that you need Spanish mm -hmm. subtitles. Otherwise, you won't see Spanish subtitles. Uh, so make sure you do that. I uh, want to let you know we're exploring Portuguese. We've got some friends in Brazil that are um, talking about maybe being a part of this. It, it, it's something we have to explore at this point, and then we'll make a decision. Um, I think by July 17th, we'll decide if we'll be able to do that, if we have enough interest. So if you know some friends in uh, Brazil or uh, speak Portuguese, that's going to be something that we're hoping that we have enough interest that we can uh, go ahead and do that. So uh, what am I missing, Carol? Um, okay, yeah, the buy uh, five, get one free part of the promotion, that's actually going to end July 17th. That doesn't mean registration will end. You'll still be able to register people, uh, but as many as you want. But getting the, the six one free part of the promotion will end. That gives us time uh, to get those uh, emails entered in. I want to let you know, if you've already bought the five and you got the six and you're trying to figure out who's going to get it, Make sure you get that turned in. That will be due uh, July 17th as well so that we can have plenty of time to get them to link mm -hmm. and make sure that we have everybody in the system. So we need a little bit of window there. So mm -hmm. we're cutting that off to buy five, get one free on July 17th. Yep. So. Registration will continue until July 31st? Yep, that right correct? on through the summit. Right, because so you, can... you have a week afterwards to watch yeah. it, correct? Yeah, so. yeah. and that will yeah. help our friends yeah. uh, overseas yeah. and, and uh, to be able to, in their own time zone, <laughs> Uh, watch watch the summit so want to encourage you as much as you can to uh, take part in the summit while it's live on the 30th and 31st because there's a lot of stuff that you'll miss if you go and just watch replays you're still going to get some good stuff out of the replay but that live experience on the live facebook group that you'll get invited mm -hmm. to as you register uh, there's going to be some great conversation q a on that uh, we'll be posting some links to some special stuff on there so yeah. you want to check that out and try to do that live if you can if you can't that's completely fine too so i want to let you know about that so yeah. are we I good on the it. announcements Think so. all right <laughs> so we're going to jump in um you know and and again talk about that you know what do we do um when it feels like when we're here feels like it's taken too long to get there. And it feels like uh, the, the path there um, uh, feels like it's too long. And we were talking about this in light of yeah. just thinking about that whole Saturday. Con right. Uh, what you explained, sure, I think that's sure. a beautiful way to so, think about that. I mean, it really is kind of born out of the question of, of have you ever been caught in the tension mm. of where you are and where you 
hope to be. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about that just in light of the whole three days that Jesus was crucified, buried, and raised to life, right? Yeah. And so talking about the idea of we wonder what Jesus' followers were feeling on that Saturday. So the day after that he died and he was buried, it had to be a really kind of hopeless feeling. But I wonder in the back of the head if they were thinking, man, I think I remember him talking about something about maybe this isn't it, maybe he's coming back, you know. Um, they were experiencing things that they've never experienced before. And that's pretty much where we are, right? We're, there's so many of us, actually all of us, that are experiencing things um, that we've never experienced before. And we're living in that Saturday, right? Yeah. It's like, it's where we are, but we know that there's something better. That Sunday is coming, mm. right? Because yeah. Sunday is when Jesus defeated death. But man, we have something even bigger than that. And that's the hope of this life is not all there is. Mm -hmm. If we're a believer in Jesus and we have our trust in him, we're assured the promise of living forever with him. And so it's that idea of like, oh man, I am stuck in this Saturday mentality. I'm stuck where I'm at. I'm, I'm stuck in, in just the everyday yuck of life. Mm -hmm. But man, that hope is, is that Sunday's coming for all of us who are in Christ uh, to be reunited with him. And that's the ultimate fulfillment of, of believing in that faith in Jesus Christ. And so just kind of thinking about that. And, and also we were just talking about some things that kind of prevent us mm -hmm. from living in that hope or living in that space of there is that hope that it's going to be different. Yeah. And so... Uh, one of our favorite books is Life Healing Choices uh, that Pastor John Baker wrote that's really based on the principles of Celebrate mm -hmm. Recovery. And so we were kind of processing this with some other people. And uh, so some of these things that we're talking about is, is kind of uh, ideas that are planted in that book and also that are very much part of the Celebrate Recovery step study process, right? Yeah. And, and so it's kind of what we're going to talk about is kind of based on principle three, which is consciously choose to commit all my life and will to Christ's care and control. Yeah. Yeah. Consciously choose because it is a, a choice. And, you know, when I'm in this place of things are not going my way, and I'd love to hear... You know, if you could be vulnerable tonight, what are some of the things that have become barriers from you trusting this process, mm -hmm. trusting God uh, is still in this, he's still on the throne, mm -hmm. and, and maybe how have you been able to work through that, but we'd love to hear from you guys on that, but, uh, you know, it's interesting, just in the recovery um, frame, you know, as we walk through recovery, uh, if you've been in recovery for a while, um, um, you know, there's a season where we come in we're hurting and we can come in and we can see some quick change mm -hmm. because we've we've kind of let go of the reins a little bit. We're saying, okay, I don't like where I am enough and the pain is great enough that I'm ready to, to face the fear of the unknown and so I'm in. And then we start to see kind of this leveling out a little bit and, and maybe things feel a little bit harder because recovery mm -hmm. can be hard, but it's worth it, right? So we have this this road where it's a little bit more difficult, and and then we may we may start getting a little bit frustrated. We say, "Man, why am I not fully recovered yet? And why why am I not there?" And th that whole idea of when when getting out of this here, this place that we're in, feels like it's so far away from there, right? And I think about that in context of the Saturday, as Carol was talking mm -hmm. about that, in recovery language, um, when we're in the middle of Saturday, it's kind of the process, mm -hmm. right? And it can feel like we're nowhere closer to Sunday. We're exactly where we were when we came in. And that's kind of what this COVID experience feels mm -hmm. like, doesn't it? It's like we're in this season, and it feels like we've been stuck in Saturday in this, this unknown and in this pain and this fear and all these things that kind of pop up and one day we stop and we, and we look at the goal and we say I'm never gonna get there right mm -hmm. and we stop and we turn around and we realize wow I've come so far and so there's a process of not just getting through it so that we can 
get to the finish line, it's growing through that. And that's why we call Celebrate Recovery a, a discipleship uh, process. And so it's trusting that even though it may not feel like God is growing you and you're changing in your Saturday, God is growing you and you're so far away. You're not where you want to be yet, but you're so far away from where you used to be. Mm -hmm. And so in that, I need to trust that though the day hasn't changed, the season that I'm in hasn't changed, how has God grown me in this season? And what is he doing to get me further down the road to get me away from that as I allow him into my, my life? Mm -hmm. So so we're talking about that whole, that choose. It's, it's another way of saying commit, right? I'm, I'm commit to choose is to cut off all other options, is mm -hmm. to decide, right? And so, but we talked about these barriers in the season, especially, but in recovery in general, and again, the Step Study Journey Begins group walks you through this Step Study group and the Life Healing Choices book. But there's these barriers that kind of get us stuck, right? Mm -hmm. And the first one is, is ironically in the season, I noticed is pride kind of mm -hmm. gets in the way, right? Mm -hmm. Just like when we walked in the door of Celebrate Recovery, am I going to commit even though things may not, my circumstances may not be changing? Am I going to commit to you, God? And pride can get in the way, right? And, and we need to be aware of that, that that can be a barrier that can keep us from fully embracing this new reality that God has given us. And so mm -hmm. uh, there's a passage, Proverbs 10, 8. Yeah. Why don't you read that? Yeah. Um, so it says, the that. wise in heart accepts commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that um, there's such a temptation in our pride and I've been guilty of this. When things aren't going my way, when it feels like it's not moving on my timetable, when things are not moving down the road uh, as efficiently as I would like, it feels like this sometimes, right? <laughs> and what we don't realize is it's actually doing this. Mm -hmm. It's going up. But it feels like we're going way back down to where we started, right? My pride can come in and I can revert back to what happened when I even walked through the doors of Celebrate Recovery, and that is trying to play God with my circumstances, trying to play God with the pain that I'm dealing with, right? Um, and so pride can get in the way, yeah. right? What's another one we, that can get in the way? Um, so guilt is something else that can get in the way. Yeah. yeah. And especially if we haven't handled the season in the most healthy way. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that's so good. Cause so guilt, um, I've, I've made some mistakes. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, my thinking hasn't been what it was pre-COVID, right? Or maybe I've made some choices. Maybe I've, I've lashed out in anger at people closest to me and reverted back mm -hmm. to some unhealthy behaviors. Maybe some codependency has really come online and, and I found myself, uh, we, we were talking about this term, we talk about in, in uh, crisis we have a fight. Mm -hmm. We fight and we protect, right? Um, we defend, uh, so we have that fight, we have the flight, where we kind of withdraw and hide, um, and then we have flight, where we run away, right, mm -hmm. or freeze, we have freeze and flight, mm -hmm. freeze is where we get stuck, in the, and then flight is where we run away, but there's a fourth term mm -hmm. called fawn, mm -hmm. F-A-W-N, and that's when we, we cling uh, to people in unhealthy ways mm -hmm. as a response to the, the trauma and the, and the stuff that's going on around us. And so maybe we've reverted back to some old ones or some new things have popped up. And so the enemy will whisper in our ear in that place, you've already messed up. There's no way you can go back to that one that you were uh, following. And so guilt gets in the way mm -hmm. and then we get stuck. God mm -hmm. can't forgive me, I've made a mistake and I'm stuck, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, Psalm 32, five is a good passage to, to think about. Uh, in that place. Yes. 32 5 says, Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. And I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Yeah. So there's a key thing is I, I stopped covering up. Mm -hmm. I need to bring it to the light. And the beautiful thing about that, that scripture is that God, it's a scripture that reminds us that God will heal us. He will forgive us. He will he will take that shame and that guilt and bring it into light and bring healing. He will forgive you. There's nothing that you've done in this season 
I know you're thinking, yeah, but you don't know what I did, mm -hmm. what I've done, Rodney. Well, I'm a pretty messed up dude, and I've done some really bad things, and if God can forgive me, I promise you he can forgive you. Mm -hmm. So nothing you have done will ever separate you from the love of God. Mm -hmm. And so if guilt is getting in the way of you tr keeping your turning your life and your will over to his care and control, and you're holding on to that, um, I want you to know that God will forgive you if you just ask him. And then tell someone about it. Tell someone, this is what I've been struggling with, but God's already forgiven me, and I need to stay accountable and give uh, someone permission to, to hold me accountable mm -hmm. in that. So another one is fear, right? Right. <laughs> fear is another one, uh, especially right now, mm -hmm. we kind of have this fear of the unknown, mm -hmm. right? Boy, that's a big one that keeps us from uh, following and committing to God because that fear of the unknown is a tricky one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been stuck in that, that frozen place because... I don't know what the future holds. Some of you have lost a job. Some of you um, have been dealing with illnesses. Uh, some of you, uh, I know specifically in ministry, uh, we used to do ministry a certain way, and now we're not doing it that way anymore. And so, uh, which kind of ties with the whole uh, the uh, guilt and the pride as well, but we start feeling guilty that we're not serving the, in the way that we used to. Mm -hmm. And so our value in that guilt uh, starts to be um, damaged, right? But that fear of the unknown, right? Am I, am, am I afraid? Here's where I, in recovery language, and I think we're very much in recovery language with COVID, but mm -hmm. when I came into recovery, there was a big question that was resonating in my heart, and that is, what am I afraid to give up? Because if I give this up, what will happen, Right? Will everything fall apart? Because even though my life is chaotic, it's it's comfortable. <laughs> Weird saying that, but we can become comfortable in our chaos and just in a weird way, because I feel like I'm in control of it, I hold on to it because I'm afraid if I l release control of that, then things could really spin out of control <laughs> as if it's really in control when we're trying to control it. But but what's the passage connected with? Uh, with do we have one connected with that one? You were going to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love this analogy. Just, uh, it's really not an analogy. It's it's really a fact from God's word. Thinking about Moses, when Moses was, um, he's talking with God, and it's this whole interaction. Uh, I think it's in uh, Exodus. Maybe I don't have the reference off the top of my head, but but Moses is talking to God, and God asks him a question. Um, Moses, what is in your hand? This is fascinating. If you know the story, Moses has got the, the staff mm -hmm. of Moses in his hand, right? Now, what does that represent? That's important that we understand. And I, I like just that visual of white knuckling. We're holding on mm -hmm. so tight, right? Moses, what is in your hand? Well, what was in his hand? And we know it was the staff of Moses. And what did it represent? It represented his identity. Mm -hmm. um, that's who he was. It represented his income. That's how he made his living. Uh, it, it represented his influence. This is how I shepherd. This is what I do. And I think about that in the context of what we're doing today. I thought this was my role. This is, you know, what am I holding on to? This is my income. Maybe I lost my job. Uh, this is my identity, right? Sometimes we put our identity in what we do. And he's holding on to this staff. And God says, what is in your hand, Moses? Mm -hmm. Throw it down. That's fascinating. And what does Moses do? He throws it down, and we know that it turns into the snake and that, the whole rest of the story there. Fascinating story. Go check it out. But when he picks up that staff again, here's the cool thing. From that point forward, it was never, ever again in Scripture referred to as a staff of Moses. Go check it out. And from that point forward, it was referred to as a staff of God. Hmm. And that's so fascinating. It's like, the very thing, my, my identity, my influence, my income, or whatever, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. God is saying, what is in your hand? What are you trying to control out of fear? I need you to throw it down. If it's called the staff of Rodney or Carol or mm -hmm. Greg or Lowell or Jared or whoever, if you're watching, right? He's saying, throw it down, mm -hmm. and when you pick it up, it'll now be mine.
Mm. That's so cool. Such a good reminder. So, but fear can keep us from throwing that down mm. because if I throw it down, I'll lose my identity. I'll lose my influence. I'll lose my income. It's like, no, I've got to let go of this. I'm going to let you uh, uh, take over. I'm going to let go and let God. Mm -hmm. So what's the next barrier? Yeah, so something? hand in hand with fear, right, is worry. Yeah. Especially worrying about our future. And especially right now, just as all those things that you just mentioned, people losing jobs and yeah. people having illnesses to deal with or have lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. It's like that worry of what the future is going to look like. Yeah. Yeah, so Philippians 1.6 is a great yeah. passage. It says, uh, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, through that same, that same idea of holding on, uh, used this before, but I love the picture. If you've ever seen anybody on a trapeze, um, you know, it's interesting. So they're, they're kind of holding on. Again, there's that white knuckling, right? Mm -hmm. And we're swinging through life. That's the noise, noise wind, right? <laughs> and so we're swinging, and, and, and then we see on the other side, if you've ever seen two trapeze, you got one swinging this way, and then you see another one, and there's a point where they can kind of connect, right? But if mm -hmm. we're over here, and we're swinging in, holding on really tight, right? Jesus is swinging in this way, only he's got his arms mm -hmm. reached out like this. And every time he swings in, he's reaching his hands out to you and I, right? But every time we swing in, he's like, will you let go? And he's like, I need you to let go of that, that trapeze, Rodney. Let go of it. I can't yet, God. And we swing away. Mm -hmm. and, then, and Jesus swings in. How about now? No, not yet, God. I've got more I've got to do. I'm, it's going to fall apart if I don't. And so there's this swinging back and forth. And worry can be one of those things uh, that can keep us what if I let go and I fall to my death? When mm -hmm. Jesus is saying, you just let go and I'm going to catch you. And it's going to feel like death because there is a process of, of letting that old false version of ourself die away. But let me take you and I'm going to take you in a new, a new beautiful way, right? He takes us in this new direction and so there's this process of trusting that, God, you began this good work in me, and you're going to complete it. And though we're still stuck in this season of Saturday, and I want so badly, I, I'm tired of this COVID. I want so badly to sun, for Sunday to come. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's days where it's hard. Can I trust God that even though I can't see it, that he's working? And I start to worry about my job. I start to worry about the family. I start to worry about the people that I've called to shepherd. And God's saying, Rodney, I need you to let go. And then he grabs us and he takes us in a new direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love that picture. So maybe you're holding on and you're kind of swinging through this COVID season. And God is saying, I need you to let go. I need you to consciously choose to commit all of your life and will to my care, to my control it'll be so much uh, better for you. So worry is the fourth barrier. What about mm -hmm. the fifth one? Yeah, doubt. Doubt, yeah. That's probably the greatest one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, when we're in this place of doubt, we start to doubt everything. This is never going to get better. So we start having thoughts of, I just need to give up. And that's so discouraging because in this season, um, the enemy tries to feed us with this doubt, um, but God wants us to grow through this and not have doubt, but have hope and trust. Mm -hmm. And part of that doubt can come from, I'm the one that's swinging through trying to make all this work, and it's not working. Mm -hmm. Everything's falling apart, and until I can let go and fully trust Him, I'm gonna stay in this place of doubt. And because I can't handle doing this on my own, I get tired after a while, I can do it for a while, but eventually, um, I'm gonna fall mm -hmm. to my death. So, God, I need to let go and trust you and let you uh, take me in this new direction. Yeah. So, uh, so important. Matthew 17, 20. Why don't you uh, read that? Uh, truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be, be impossible for you. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing will be impossible for you. God will empower you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead mm. is inside of you. 
and he's going to use that power um, to help you. Mm -hmm. So there's an old story. <laughs> it's been a while since I've shared this, but I was thinking about this with our, we we're talking through this. You know, there was these two little kind of rascally uh, <laughs> young boys and they knew that there was this man who lived on the hill and he was supposedly, he had this reputation of being very wise. Well, along the way to their house, they were trying to think of a way that they could uh, trick this guy and show uh, that he, in fact, is uh, not uh, wise. And they found this wounded bird on the side of the road. And they thought, here's our chance. We are going to get this guy. We're going to show that he's not wise after all. So they take this wounded bird, just you know, barely alive, and they walk up to this wise man's door, and they knock on it, and they put the bird behind their back. And they ask this wise man uh, a question. They said, is the bird behind my back dead or alive? And they're thinking, if he says the bird is dead, then we'll just show this wounded bird and say, no, the bird's alive. But if he says the bird is alive, then we will crush the bird in our hands and say, you were wrong, the bird is, is dead. And so they pose that question, is the bird dead or alive? And the old man thought about it for a second, and he said, the answer is in your hands. Mm -hmm. The choice is yours. And it kind of got them right. It's like, wow. I think about that with our recovery while we're trying to manufacture and make things happen. It's like I can, I can kind of manipulate this and make it what I want. What God is saying is you don't have to manipulate this. The choice is in your hands. You have a choice. You have a choice to, to embrace and run back to the Father and have this, this empowering presence and strength that only God can give us or we could try to take it in our hands, which will always lead to death, will always lead to destruction, will always take us down uh, the wrong path. Mm -hmm. And so Philippians uh, 4.13, Carol, why don't you yeah. read that? I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Mm -hmm. I can do all things, but I need to consciously choose to commit all of my life and will to Christ's care mm -hmm. and his control to decide, right? There's, there's no plan B. And yes, even in the season when things are going really hard and they're really bad, um, it seems like we're never going to get to Sunday and it feels frustrating. It feels discouraging. We can start to revert back to plan B. And, and we did that in our recovery too, right? It's like, we, I'm in God. I come in, I cut off all other options, but I got a plan B mm -hmm. just in case things don't go my way, right? The only way to really decide and consciously choose to commit is to cut off all other plans. There's only a plan A. And so God is Joshua and Caleb entering the promised land. Mm -hmm. the, the spies that went in and it, all the spies but two said there's big giants there. We can't possibly go into the promised land. But Joshua and Caleb said, no, we're going in and we're going now. God's got our back. There's no plan B. You see, the other ones that got afraid of the giants in front of them started thinking about, well, maybe Egypt wasn't that bad. <laughs> and they started thinking and fantasizing about going back and living in slavery in Egypt, right? We start to fantasize about that. We come up with our own plan B, and it's just going to keep us in bondage and in slavery. I want to be like Joshua and Caleb and say, there's only plan A. God called us to this season. For us, it's called us to COVID. Mm -hmm. He'll be faithful to carry us through it. Mm -hmm. We're going over mm -hmm. and we're going in the promised land. We're going to rest in his promises and trust him that he's got a plan. Mm -hmm. And though I can't see it in front of me right now, I'm not going to try to take the reins back and go to plan B because there is no plan B that will be successful. Mm -hmm. So yeah. go through that Saturday expression yeah right I mean and that's the way that we live in our Saturdays right even when Saturdays seem to repeat themselves over and over again it's about consciously choosing to commit that's it yeah all my life right 
all my will, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Not some of it, not when things are going well, yeah. but even through the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, the ugly. <laughs> and COVID's been ugly. The things happening around us are ugly. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. I saw someone, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming, yeah. right? Um, but in order to get to Sunday, sometimes we just want to go from Friday yeah. to Sunday. We have to walk through Saturday. There is a Saturday. To grow through it, absolutely. Yeah. It's the process, just like you said earlier. Yeah. Absolutely. And how cool is that to be able to one day look back and say, not I went from really hard Friday to a resurrected Sunday. I walked through, I grew through some really, really hard things. God, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for growing me through this as I consciously chose to commit all my life and will to you. And mm -hmm. God, you taught me so much in that season. I don't know that I want to go back to that, but I love the effects of mm -hmm. walking through that Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so we're in this Saturday with you, yeah. and we'll, we can't wait till we can rejoice on the Sunday with you when we can come through this. Uh, but let's not just get through this. Let's consciously choose to commit all our life and will grow through this mm -hmm. as Christ grows us through this um, and we'll have an amazing testimony to share not just with our ministry with ministry but one day with our kids and our grandkids and mm -hmm. and they'll pass that on look how they walk through that season mm -hmm. so well yeah. so are you gonna say something mm -hmm. okay <laughs> well that that's our, our word for you tonight um, we pray that, that if you're in a tough Saturday and, and we're all kind of stuck in this COVID season of a broken world, but um, hang in there. Mm -hmm. um, don't let those barriers that we talked about, that Pastor John writes about in, in, in Life Healing Choices and in Celebrate Recovery Step Study Journey Begins, mm -hmm. don't let those barriers get in the way. And if those barriers are there, don't shame yourself. Talk to someone. Hey, I'm dealing with pride. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with worry and doubt and fear, right? All these things that are getting in the way and they're keeping me from fully experiencing God's plan mm -hmm. for my life. Tell someone about that, and uh, they will they will bless you through that. So, hey, you want to pray pray I us would out? Love to. Okay. Father, just uh, thank you so much uh, for the gift of technology, just to mm -hmm. be able to connect with our forever family. And so, Lord, um, you know each person that's watching um, exactly every detail of their lives, and what an incredible. Just blessing that is to know that, first of all, that you care enough about each one of us, that you know about every detail um, of our life. And so, Lord, there are many that are struggling. Um, there are many that are finding victory right now as, as well, Lord, and we praise you for that. Mm -hmm. Those that are struggling, Lord, I pray um, that they would just be able to see you in the midst of their Saturday. They would be able to see glimpses of where you're holding out your hand to grab onto them. Mm -hmm. Uh, they would just see where you're moving. Um, so, Lord, uh, we just pray um, that they would have the strength to consciously choose to commit all their life and will to mm -hmm. your care and control. Mm -hmm. We're going to rest in that. We're going to trust in that. Lord, we know that you are good, and we're so grateful. Mm -hmm. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us tonight. Be sure to be here tomorrow night, same time, and go to CRSummits.com. It's a summit for all, whether you're a first-time visitor or you've been in it for 25 years. Uh, this is a summit for you, and we can't wait. We're so excited. It's going to be a fun okay. summit uh, experience on July 30th. And I believe 31st. Cheryl Luke is here tomorrow night. Cheryl so. Luke, don't miss it. Yes. She's always wonderful. Yes. So We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll Bye. see you soon.